Continue with section C of our paper two. We are on question 10 now. Find the term hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is a compound which contains only carbon and hydrogen. Okay, that's what we call a hydrocarbon. The next part says, name any one homologous series under hydrocarbons. We have many. You can name, for the sake of time, alkanes or you can name alkenes. Depends with you which ones you are comfortable with. From the homologous series named in one, name the hydrocarbon with three carbon atoms. If it is an alkane, then its general formula is CnH2n plus 2, which means that if it is C3, it will be C3H6 uh, plus 2, which means it will be C3H8. This one is called propane. Now the important thing to note about hydrocarbons is that their names are almost similar. If it's an alkene, then instead of adding a Ne, you are going to say it will be just C3H6 because its general formula is CnH2n. So it will be al an alkene. Instead of an alkene, it will be an alkene. Where we have propane with three carbon atoms, this one will be called propene. Propene. Then the next question says, draw the displayed formula of the hydrocarbon named in 3. So if it is propane, you first draw your open chain of 3 carbon atoms, 1, 2, 3. Then you add the hydrogens and make sure that the bonds are enough. Each carbon should have 4 bonds because there are no double bonds in propane. So if it's propane, we have how many hydrogens? 8, 1, 2, three four five six seven and eight this is your propane if you had written an alkene propene then it would have at least one double bond okay and three carbon atoms so already which when it is already two bonds it only needs two more so we're going to add two more bonds there one two so that it is four this one already has one two three so it only needs one more bond this one only has one so it is two and three so we add the hydrogens one two three four five six okay right so this one would be your propene all right Biogas is a renewable fuel obtained from organic waste. Describe how biogas is produced. So when we are producing biogas, we are going to use organic waste, for example, dead plants. Organic waste, just right, organic waste is fed into a pit or a closed pit, which we call the biogas digester, into a closed pit so that there is going to be fermentation close the pit which we call the uh, biogas digester just write that one biogas digester then the wastes are mixed with water so that we can provide the proper medium for bacteria to work remember that bacteria are biological organisms so they need moisture and they will need a substrate which they will work on which will be the dead plant matter so fermentation will take place because it's a closed vessel no oxygen is going to be allowed when they ferment they're going to produce methane carbon dioxide as the byproducts part two state three conditions needed for optimum production of biogas so for biogas production to take place we need an optimum temperature because there are going to be enzymes involved so we need temperature of between 35 to 55 degrees celsius then we need an optimum ph optimum ph which is slightly acidic or slightly alkaline the optimum ph levels therefore would be around from around 6.5 to 7.5 Extremely low pH can inhibit uh, microbial activity and therefore reduce the yield of biogas. Higher pH levels can also lead to ammonia toxicity and also lead to hindrance of biogas production. We also need to exclude air, 
no oxygen is needed we need aided conditions so that we can have fermentation taking place let's move on to question 11. nitrogen and hydrogen gases were compressed in the reaction chamber at a temperature of 150 to 500 degrees celsius to produce ammonia describe what would happen to the yield of ammonia if the temperature of the reaction chamber was raised to 800 degrees celsius so when we increase the temperature because the reaction is in equilibrium and is exothermic because it gives out heat at these optimum conditions if we increase the temperature it will mean that ammonia would begin to decompose favoring the backward reaction and hence the yield of ammonia would decrease because of that decomposition of ammonia next part it asks you state two optimum conditions for the harbor process other than temperature so if we have our optimum temperature there we also need a finely divided ion catalyst finely divided ion catalyst so the catalyst is going to speed up the rate of reaction and we also need a pressure of 200 to 300 atmosphere this is our, our, our optimum pressure for this reaction the next part says explain why ammonia and other gases are recycled into the reaction chamber because the reaction is reversible it does not go to completion therefore the proportion of ammonia in the mixture is about 15 percent only ammonia because it is a higher boiling point than nitrogen or hydrogen it is easily condensed upon cooling and then it, it is collected at the bottom. The unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen gases are recycled in, into the reaction chamber where they are going to be repassed over the finely divided iron catalyst. By continuous recycling in this way, each 15% adds up to an eventual 98% yield. State any two industrial uses of ammonia. The most uh, obvious one is manufacture of fertilizer. Another one is making detergents or making household cleaners, like those detergents which contain ammonia, especially for use in the toilet. Purification of water, usage used as a refrigerant. Calculate the number of moles in 56 dm cubed of ammonia. So the number of moles in is equals to use the formula volume over molar gas volume what we do here we divide the volume which we've been given 56 dm cubed divided by the molar gas volume which is 28 dm cubed per mole and then we simply divide 56 by 28 that gives us two the dm cubed crosses each other out and then we're going to remain with two moles. Fig 12.1 shows how the volume of gas X varied with time as a two centimeter piece of magnesium ribbon reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid HCl. So this is the reaction between a metal and an acid. You should know that the products are a salt and hydrogen. Okay. So what is gas X? Gas X obviously it is hydrogen. All right, moving on. From the graph, deduce the maximum volume of gas X produced at the end of the reaction. So the maximum volume is the one at which the graph levels off here. So you can see from our graph that each one unit, each one small box here represents one unit. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So it is 25 cubic centimeters here. 25 cubic centimeters, 25 determine the time taken for the reaction to get to completion again this is the time where we the graph reaches completion if you can notice here that each five units the small boxes represent one unit so this will be one and then this is two this one will be three so at the graph at the time or where the graph levels of it is three minutes at uh, four describe the effect of using magnesium powder instead of the magnesium ribbon to the rate of reaction so when we reduce the size of the magnesium ribbon to magnesium powder what it means is we've increased the surface area and hence if we increase the surface area it increases rate of reaction state any two factors other than surface area that would increase the rate 
of reaction so the one thing that we should always write increase in temperature of hcl increase in concentration of hcl and then the other one obviously using a finely divided catalyst next question part b state an industrial process that produces nitrogen this is the fractional distillation of liquid air state any two uses of nitrogen we've already looked at one of them production of ammonia a liquid nitrogen is used in preservation to preserve biological specimens for example vegetables organs which are being donated sperm eggs etc etc this marks the end of section c watch the next video to enjoy section d